Uh, I, when I was talking about uh, a, a while back, I was doing the book review and I talked briefly about Maya Lord by a guy called uh, John Co. Robbins, um, which, as I will say again, I do not recommend an audio book, but the book, it, it is a good book because it's just such a good story. Um, I sort of underplayed how amazing it is. Jerome Aguilar and Gonzalo Guerrero are two guys. They're on a boat. They are going back to Spain to, because they were in Panama and there was a legal dispute with the governor of Panama. Uh, and so they went. They were going back to Spain to present a petition to the courts in Spain to get this adjudicated from the mother country. Mexico at this time hadn't been um, colonized. Panama was sort of earlier. Um, so a very small colony, and so they, they, they head out, but they get shipwrecked uh, and they're stuck in lifeboats. A lot of them die. They The people who make it to shore, um, dying of thirst, crawl up the beach and are immediately captured by local Mayans, who they've never come into contact with Europeans before. Um, they're put in cages and the survivors are sacrificed to the gods one by one. But um, Jerome Aguilar and Gonzalo Guerrero uh, managed to escape. And I think from the 10 or 13 or so that, that, that survived to the cages, I think they're the only two that escape. Um, and they, they cut, I think using a sharpened belt buckle, if I remember, they cut their way out of the wooden cages that they're being held in and make a run for it through the jungle and get immediately captured by another Mayan lord who treats them much better, uh, although they're still captives. And here's where their stories diverge, because Jerome Aguilar is a man of God. Uh, he is a priest. <clears throat> he um, never assimilates to Mayan culture and, and prays every day and, and is an outcast as a result. Gonzalo Guerrero is a more practical man. He's a, a big, tough brawler. He was a seaman. Um, and uh, he immediately makes himself useful to the Mayans, um, participates, is eventually uh, invited to participate in war raiding um, and is a successful war leader, rises in Mayan society, marries the um, daughter of one of the chiefs, has his face tattooed and um, assimilates to Mayan society to the point where he does things that to Jerome Aguilar, his only compatriot, his only um, countryman in, the, in, in Mexico at this point, um, he considers unforgivable. So he, part he, he worships before Mayan gods and participates in ritualistic cannibalism. Uh, so Gonzalo Guerrero has, has gone native. Uh, Cortez then arrives and hears about um, uh, Jerome Aguilar and Guerrero. Uh, the, the Mayans um, sort of say that through a lot of hand gesturing, I would imagine that they've seen someone similar to, to you before. Uh, <laughs> because the Spanish had beards, which is not generally Mesoamerican um, men. Both Mayans and, and Aztecs don't, don't don't grow a thick beard like Spanish people do. Anyway, um, when Cortes sent for Jerome Aguilar, immediately realizing that he could be useful, and indeed he was, um, he uh, allowed. He had learnt uh, Yucatec Mayan. He'd been, I think, eight years. He was in captivity with the Mayans. Um, and when Cortez found him, he knew what day of the week it was uh, because he had kept his prayers every day for those eight years. Uh, when Cortez sent for him, um, he thought, you know, that the, the, this was God's plan for him. God had um, sent salvation. And he uh, sent word immediately to Guerrero saying, repent your sins and come back um, to the Holy Mother Church. And as you know from my book review, if you watched it, Guerrero said, no, um, my, my face is tattooed. I've got holes in my ears. I have a Mayan wife and, and son who, with his head bound in the Mayan style. The Mayans practiced head binding. Um, I can't I can't go back to Spanish Christendom. <laughs> Uh, and 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 Jerome Aguilar was really heartbroken by this. Um, and uh, but Jerome Aguilar was later was instrumental in the conquest. Uh, he established a, a chain of translators. So we, the people who he, Cortes needed to speak to, um, who became his crucial allies and who he was able to uh, negotiate with for food, um, for porters, for logistical support, housing for his troops. Um, the native and guides to the land that the native allies that he used he communicated with uh, through a, a girl called Malinche um, 
who was also a prisoner who he got from the Mayans, who spoke Nahuatl and Yucatec Mayan, then Jerome Aguilar, then Cortes. So Cortes would speak, Jerome would translate from Spanish to Yucatec Mayan, Malinche would translate from Yucatec Mayan to Nahuatl, the chief would reply in Nahuatl, <laughs> Malinche would translate to Yucatec Mayan, Jerome Aguilar would translate from Yucatec Mayan to Spanish, and Cortes would then understand what the chief had said and, and reply. It's funny to think of this little chain of Chinese whispers, uh, two Spaniards and two um, native people, uh, each with, you know, with this vast cultural misunderstanding between them. And, and, and anyone in this chain can sort of interpret the message and, <laughs> and, and, and twist it to be any way they want. And they've all got their own agendas. Uh, it's, yeah, anyway. Um, so Jerome Aguilar is very uh, important to the conquest in Mexico. He sort of enables it. Later, Malinche, uh, who they sometimes call the tongue, la lengua, um, she was a very gifted uh, linguist and she learned Spanish. So after some time, Jerome Aguilar was sort of cut out of the translation uh, business as, as far as Cortez's uh, requirements. Malinche could translate directly to Nahuatl. Um, Jerome never learned Nahuatl, but you know he would have been hanging around mostly with the um, Spanish troops, so that's kind of understandable. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, um, Jerome, uh, no, moving on to Gonzalo Guerrero. Gonzalo Guerrero uh, continued as a Mayan war leader, and as the Spanish expanded their control later on of Mesoamerica, um, Gonzalo Guerrero dies leading Mayan war canoes against the Spanish. Um, which is, yeah, which is just amazing. So um, it, it, it really is a great story and, and, and history is amazing. <laughs>